Well, the first ingredient is just plain flour, and if you use a soft flour, that'll make a fluffier pancake. So one that's made especially for baking. And then we cut it with either buckwheat or spelt flour, which has got a lower gluten content than regular flour. And if it's wholemeal, that's even better. Stone ground wholemeal, because that'll have more vitamins and minerals in it. So try and use unbleached. Now coconut sugar is better than regular white sugar because it's got more minerals in it and it's lower GI. Of course it's more expensive so you only want to use a quarter of a cup because later on you can sweeten your pancake with maple syrup or berries. So we're not going to use an awful lot of sugar. If your family is very addicted to sugar you want to start cutting them down gradually so you might use double that amount to start off with say half a cup and just gradually reduce the amount of sugar that you're putting into things. Now for baking powder we're going to use a special brand called Salt Skip and Salt Skip is two and a half teaspoons for each one cup of flour that you have to raise it. It has no sodium And then of course your eggs are free range eggs. So free range eggs have a different fat profile to corn fed and barn raised animals if they're allowed to graze on good green grass and be outside in the sunshine you're going to have a much better fat profile. Now we're going to use kefir. It's a little bit sour depending on how long you ferment this for. So it's fermented milk. It's got different vitamin profile to regular milk. It's low in lactase so it's easy to digest. And we just get the kefir grains out. You can see how thick it is. It's almost like yogurt. And it has a lot of not just biological activity. It's um, just got fantastic things in it. It's a whole segment on its own. So we'll strain the kefir grains out and keep them to make some more kefir later. The acidity, the lactic acid in the in the kefir will help to make some very fluffy pancakes when it combines with the raising agent with the salt skip. You see the bubbles. So I'm going to add it in two batches of half a cup each. And using a whisk is going to get those lumps out very quickly and easily. Don't stir it too much, just as much as you need to get it nice and smooth. Alright, so we're just going to add a little bit of whole grain milk. Probably another Wants to oh. it's a good boring consistency. So can you get 
right into the bowl just to see. Sort of making a, a bit of a dent in the in the batter. So no, okay, don't mix it too much. Now we have to rest rest the mixture. Can you see the bubbles? Is that good? See? Yeah, that means it's going to be nice and fluffy. Okie okay, doke. Do. So we've got it on medium high. Putting a little bit of coconut oil on. Solid because it's winter here. We make the pan hot enough to make it fizz up. Could you pull that in with your left hand? Oh, no, I can't. You just have to move the... one tablespoon. I usually find about somewhere between two and three tablespoons is a good size. It's just not too big. Wait. Try to film the next one, me standing where you are. What, yeah, whatever you want to do, but just make sure you get the bubbles in there. Okay, so you just watch it very carefully to make sure that it's puffing up but not burning quicker than it cooks through. So if it gets too hot and it's browning too fast, you just lift it. So it's puffing up nice. You can see the little bubbles. Thank you. 